Hi everyone, this is Eugene Lee Show. Today I'd like to show you a little bit about Cloud Compare. And if you don't know what Cloud Compare is and you're working with scan data, I think you'll find it an extremely useful tool. Uh, this is a, uh, a little open source project that began in about 2004 from uh, Daniel uh, Girardot Monteau in France. And um, it's used for 3D deviation analysis and also for registration. Um, it's freely available and is a great, great tool. Uh, if you're interested in getting it, uh, you can look for it right over, let me bring this up on my screen right here, so at uh, danielgm.net slash cc and uh, uh, you can just uh, download it from here. So uh, again, this is something that is used to compare uh, point cloud to point cloud or a mesh to a point cloud and it has a number of useful tools. I'm just going to give a very preliminary look at um, how you can uh, quickly get two point clouds in and do a, a quick comparison. Um, I have to say that I am rather new with Cloud Compare, so I've got the basics down and there's probably a lot more uh, in-depth tutorials that could be done and a lot more features here, but uh, I'm just going to stick with the basics because that's what I'm comfortable with. So the first thing that we need to do is open up a couple of point clouds. So I have two point clouds. I'm just going to select them both and open them. And on the importer here, you'll see I've got XYZ coordinates. There's a scalar field, which is the intensity and RGB. So I'm just going to hit OK. So this will start to import the first one. And once that's in, um, I'll do the second one immediately. immediately. So it's, it's in the same format. So I'm just going to hit OK. And this will come in as well. Now you'll see that on screen, the scalar is uh, what's being shown. So the intensity is what is actually being shown. So I'm going to get rid of that. These are uh, color. Um, uh, scans uh, so there is RGB information so if I highlight the first scan here the garden one this is going to be our reference scan let's say and I scroll down here just a bit you'll see that it, it's now currently showing the scalar field I'm just going to go to none and you'll see I start to get color and I'm going to do the same thing for the second one I'm going to scroll down go to scalar field and hit none okay so both there now you can make these visible or not just by checking them off and on and I'm just going to zoom in and show you what I've got here. So this is the, the second one that I did, and, and this is just a, a garden here. And I just, um, well, let me go back to the first scan. The first scan is just a, uh, you know, sort of dirt in the garden, uh, nothing special, uh, like so. And on the second one, what I did was I took a shovel and I started to dig out a little uh, hole, let's say, uh, made a little depression in here that you can see from the side view. So we want to we want to compare these two, and of course this is a something that you could do with any kind of terrain or, or pits or mines, whatever. I'm sure there's uh, a number of things you can think of where uh, surfaces are changing. So uh, right now, they're in uh, this position. This is the, the position that they came in. Uh, these are both in uh, meter units, but uh, Cloud Compare doesn't actually deal with, or you can't actually set the units. So whatever it comes in with, they should have the uh, same scale units already. Um, now. I can start to register these uh, right off the bat, but if I wanted to, uh, there's a couple of useful tools. So if I go on to the uh, base reference one here, there's an option here for uh, translate rotate. So when I click this, um, now instead of rotating, what I'm actually going to be translating when I start using the mouse tool. So it's not just the view that I'm rotating, but the actual object. So when I uh, right click and I move up and down, I'm actually moving the scan closer and, and further away to the other scan. So I'll move it up a little bit like that. And I can also rotate it, if you see, I can rotate it with respect to the other one. So that's one way you could bring the two scans together. So I'll just accept that for now. They're close enough. Now, there is a, another way to do this uh, through, the, uh, through the matrix here. And I'm just going to show you that it's here. Uh, apply transformation. So there's a, a matrix here that we can um, uh, change uh, certain things. And there's actually a, in the help files right here, you'll see that it gives some information on what uh, each of these values is. So that's something that if you're into, you can use as well. All right, so to do the basic registration, uh, what I need to do is click on two of the scans. So I'm gonna click the, the first one, this garden one, and I'm gonna hold down the control key and hit the second one, garden two. And up here on this particular icon is register entities. So I'm gonna click on that, and this little menu comes up. So right now, my model or my, my base, my reference scan is Cloud Compare Garden 1. That's fine. And then the data that it's going to be compared to is Garden 2, which is fine. That, that is what I wanted. Now, the error difference, um, if you want to make this more 
uh, fine. You can make this uh, a lot smaller. So if I wanted a really small value, I'm going to have it uh, down to 1 to the minus 20 and the random sampling limit. So it's going to sample uh, a number of points, 20,000 points. Now, if I want to sample more of the points, uh, I can. So I'll set this to something like 60,000. And of course, um, the scans themselves contain uh, well, well over a million points each. So if I set this value to a million, then I would be sampling almost all the points in the point cloud. But we're going to do something a little less just to make it uh, quick. So I'm going to hit OK. And this should uh, start to go through iteratively and try to get the uh, errors, the mean square errors down as small as possible. So we'll just wait and see what happens uh, once it uh, goes through here. Okay, so that, that wasn't too bad. So you can see the both scans are now aligned to each other. Uh, they're one on top of each other. So um, hard to tell them apart actually because it almost looks like one of them. But in fact they're both visible so they're, they're both there. So that's the, the registration. Um, now, because these these two scans are very similar, if you're if you're going to be registering scans that are dissimilar, very dissimilar, you may find that you have some problems. And some of the things that you can do, let me just go back, and I'll just leave the base one on. Is you can also edit the scan. So if I select the base scan, there's a button here for segmentation. So if I click on that, I can actually um, choose, for example, a, a polygon selector, and I can go through and, and cut out a piece. So uh, what I would recommend, and I'm not going to show it to you here, but if you have two dissimilar point clouds, but part of them part of them are the same, cut out the section that is dissimilar, and leave just the parts that are the same. Register them, and then apply the same transformation to the part that you had cut out. So I know it may uh, may sound a little bit uh, confusing. I'm just going to segment this out, and you'll see that it's it's disappeared out of here. Okay, and then if I wanted to, I could confirm that and it will show up as a, as a separate uh, scan here. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cancel this out. I don't want to do that. But I'm just giving you some hints here. Uh, okay, so, um, yeah, and I showed you so some of the segmentation tools. I'm going to turn both clouds back on. And now what I'm going to do is a cloud-to-cloud -cloud comparison. So, again, I'm going to uh, control-click. So I've got both of these scans selected. And over here, I've got a cloud-to-cloud -cloud uh, distance or comparison. Now you can also do over here you've got cloud to mesh distance so if you were to bring in something like a CAD model that was a, uh, a reference and then you have a scan that's of an actual part well you can do a comparison but we're just gonna stick with cloud to cloud so here I've got the references too well I'm gonna swap that because my base was the one that had the uh, sort of the more level garden soil and then gar and garden 2 was the one where I actually uh, dug out a little uh, little uh, depression or a hole. So I'm going to hit OK and it's going to go through and, and do a little something here and set it up and you can see already that we've got a little bit of uh, deviation showing here. Okay, but I need to um, uh, set some things here before I can uh, hit OK and I need to compute. So I normally choose Octree level at 8. Um, you can experiment with some different values but uh, again I'm not very familiar with some of these local modeling and uh, uh, I was told once to use Octree Level 8 and that seems to be working for me. Uh, probably in another tutorial I'll dig in a bit more and figure out uh, what all these things do. But uh, if you hit the compute button, it will now go through it and do the analysis on all the points. And you can see it's already done. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, once I do that, if I deselect everything, you see I've got the actual mod one model in here and also the deviated model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see which one that is. I'm going to turn one off and now I've got this to the second one up here. So we have some things that we can play with, we can set. And if I go down to here, if I scroll down, you see I've got some things here that I can play with. But the one I'm looking for, let me just do this here, is display the colors uh, scale. So I'm going to click on that and up on my screen is a color scale showing the, what the colors represent in terms of the actual values of deviation. So let me zoom out a bit so you can see that. Okay, now if I take the sliders that were up here, um, the top one will show what is displayed. So as I start to turn this down, uh, some of these things are going to start to disappear in terms of color. But because they're very similar, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the scale. So you'll see if things start getting more red uh, as I change the scale limits. Okay, so I'm going to get it just so I have just a little bit of red uh, at the bottom. 
Okay, so now the areas shown in red are greater than uh, 12 centimeters or so. And um, that is basically how you do the deviation analysis. I realize it's a, sort of a basic tutorial, but uh, hopefully that will get you going. Uh, I should mention that there's some other tools as well on subsampling. Uh, this is also useful if you have a very, very big point cloud. Um, there's an icon here for uh, subsampling. And if I click that, you can set the number of points that you want out of this particular uh, point cloud. So if this was a you know a 15 million point point cloud, and I only wanted to work with I don't know maybe 100,000 points, I could just set 100,000. Uh, it'll do a random sampling. I'll hit OK, and you can see that it's already uh, brought it up here. And I've got uh, I, I've got a, you know a point cloud that is easier to manage for the uh, uh, either the deviation analysis or whatever it is that I might want to do. Okay, well, thank you very much, and uh, hope you learned something. Bye-bye.